I was so excited for the Champions League this year, and I'll be honest, when I saw the draw, I was kind of disappointed. I thought we'd come back for Champions League games last episode. We're not doing that. I've changed the plan. My Liverpool's my next Champions League game. We've played one and lost one, by the way. In case you were wondering, we're in 13th. So in terms of the games I have played in the Champions League, just to get this out of the way immediately, Red Star, 5-2 winning that game was great. And then Lil, first away day at the Champions League against the team we took on last year in the Europa League. We lost this game 3-2. Uh, it was a close game, I want to claim. I really rotated the team. And I kind of regret it. They were three nil up in this game. To be fair, it wasn't exactly a classic of a match. And despite a late resurgence, we lost 3-2. So not great, really. The kind of game we needed to win, especially because when you look at the next six games, they're not particularly easy. In terms of upcoming away days, we've got Atletico Madrid and Malmo. I've already done both those away days. I know, absolute disaster. Obviously, Liverpool at home next month. That's going to be fun. Juventus at home in December. And then after Christmas, PSG and Porto. Porto might be winnable. I hate the fact I've got to take on PSG, Juventus, Atletico and Liverpool. It feels like a hard draw. Although based on the fact we got a relatively easy draw last year in the Europa League, maybe it's just catching up with me. In terms of the games we're doing today, we are coming back to take on Man City and Fulham. The reason we're doing the Man City game is because we played them last episode and beat them after extra time. And right now, after six games played, we are in first and second. A win here, we could potentially pull... Seven points clear at the top of the table after seven games. And the second game I'm going to do today, it might be a bit of an unorthodox one if you've not been watching every episode of the series, it's Fulham away. Uh, last year, Fulham away, we drew. Or did, we, did we draw Fulham away or lose? I think it was 1-1. Just checking it here, I can confirm it was 1-1. You might remember we took on Man City and Fulham at the start of last season and dropped points in both of them. Knowing how the year ended, those two games cost us, so... I'd really love to get some revenge in both these games today. Now, since last episode, Transfer Deadline Day has come and gone. If we look at the transfer history, did I sign anyone? I hear you ask. Yeah, yeah, we we did. Uh, Bailey Salmon. We were looking at this guy, weren't we, from Aberdeen previously. I've ended up snapping him up and loaning him back to Aberdeen. Really good centre-back. I know he's inconsistent and he lacks a little bit of pace. The bloke turned 18 a month ago. Uh, for the price we paid, £12 million, it's a bargain. And in terms of departures, well, no one on deadline day left us permanently, but Pietro Pellegatta has officially left for Schalke. We received in the end £35 million. If he plays one game for the Italian national team, we get £15 million. Between the first and second game today, there's an international break. I'm a bit scared he's now not going to get called up for Italy again now he's moved to Schalke. Let's hope he does get called up, because if he doesn't, I don't get £15 million. Pounds. I might have to try and get the Italy job just to call him at once and then retire. Would that be cheesing the game? Probably, but I think I'd do it. Anyway, I've got one more dose of Park to Prem to end the week today. Let's run the intro and get straight into things, shall we? Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 94. It is Friday, and before we get into things today, just a little bit of a heads up, there will be no episode on Monday. It's Easter, I'm going to be having some chill-out time, just a day off. I don't take days off very often, and I feel like I've earned it. So I will be back on Tuesday. I hope you guys are excited for that. But to end the week today... We've got a little bit more football manager to play before I can have my break. And before we get into the matches, I just want to big up Chelik. Chelik, you know, £95 million. This guy was a risk. When you look at his recent form, you think he must be playing quite well. If I show you his career stats in the Premier League, he is playing quite well. Six goals, five assists, three player of the matches in six games. That is phenomenal. And of course, with a new update to the skin, if we just click on the analysis tab, we can just have a look at all his stats as a striker. Yeah, he's, he's doing quite well. I did explain this in the skin video, but essentially the way to think about this graph is each dash line is a percentile of 20%. If your bit in the middle is in the dead center, like one header one per game, that means that you are at 1%. You are in the bottom 1% of players in the top 20 leagues in the world. Whereas if your bar is right on the edge like this, it means he's performing in the top 1% of players who play as a striker in the top 20 leagues of Europe. Does that make sense, Capiche? As essentially, big blob, good, little thing, not good. Um, yeah, he doesn't lose the ball 
loads. He could do a little bit better there, but he does play lots of progressive passes. So that's probably why he loses the ball. Also, right now, averaging 0.42 expected assists, and yet he has five assists in the Premier League and six in six in all competitions. He's, he's doing good as Chelik. Anyway, now that I've done gassing up my own transfers and just giving myself a pat on the back, let's talk results. Where, to be fair, maybe I should pat myself on the back some more. We've had some really good results in here. We're not in the EFL Cup, but I didn't care about that anyway. We ended the month of August with two Premier League games. Not easy ones either. The first away from home against Tottenham. A good little test for us. We won this one. Fairly convincingly in the end. It was 0-0 at halftime. We ran out eventual victors. Faye and Misiak played particularly well. If I was going to throw anyone under the bus, Celik and Rojas, our two strikers, were a bit quiet in this one. Bolton picked up man of the match. We followed that first result up with another really good one against Leicester City. 3-1 in this game. Celik with two. Rojas with one. And for a third game in a row off camera, we won in the Premier League. This one, 4-1 against Newcastle on the road. Newcastle in this universe have not been particularly good. In this game here, Celic really put them to the sword. A hat-trick, a 10.0 rating, and you might have noticed as well, her dad sneaking back into the starting eleven. Good to see this man back. He's been out, of course, uh, with an injury, broke his hand in pre-season. I've rushed him back into the first team. Three clean sheets in five games already this year. It's not bad. You may have spotted it in the list of results, however. There's one game that we lost, which we shouldn't have lost. We lost against Everton at home, EFL Cup. I rotated the team for this one. Murphy and Goma popping up with a goal. We made it 2-0 inside the first 20 minutes, and we were chilling. Gilliland with his first goal of the year. And from there, we bottled it. Of course, just as a reminder, we signed Celic for, well, £95 million. We stole their star striker, and the man they signed to replace him... Grabbed a hat-trick against us. I, I don't know how to say this guy's name. Guiyu is what I'm going to go with. It's definitely not. He's Spanish. I think he plays for Barcelona's academy in real life. Either way, the striker they signed for 35 million scored a hat-trick. The third of the goals, you can perhaps imagine my reaction. I could do a dramatic reenaction of this. Uh, it went it went something like this. Oh, for sake, that is free to he chip the keeper. That was not a good reenactment. There was more swearing than that, but I'm trying to keep it PG. So we are out of the EFL Cup, but maybe that's good to have one less competition to worry about. It's certainly the one I care about the least. What it does mean is I won't be consuming Carabao this year, which is perhaps a net win. Speaking of wins, three in a row. 3-0 against Leeds United was really, really nice. Against Red Star, first game in the Champions League. 5-2 result here. Probably could have been more. We had 34 shots in this game. The match momentum really tells the story. We bullied them with a rotated team. Gilliland, man of the match in this game. I'm trying to give this guy lots of football. And to be fair, he's playing okay at the moment. After that, a 1-0 result against Nottingham Forest wasn't emphatic, but it was three points on the board. And then, as already mentioned, we lost against Lille. I regret rotating the team for that game. I felt like we could do that, having shown how good we were against them in the UEFA Cup last year. It's come back to bite me. What's going to make it 10 times worse is if we've a rotated team uh, and a rested team now against Man City, we fail to get a result. Now, one little minor concern I do just want to mention here is we are currently obviously spending more money on wages than we have been in previous years. Our free signings in the summer, the three big boys, all on over £100,000 a week. And as a result of that, we are way over the wage budget. The board let me spend over it, so, you know, it's their fault. For whatever reason... I can't add more money to the wage budget. The board will not allow you to increase the wage budget as they feel it's high enough already. I, I need it higher. We're over the wage budget. We've got £68 million in the bank as well. So I'm a little bit annoyed about this. I'm going to hope at some point they just reconfigure the budgets and they allow me to go back in budget. Don't think we're going to get sacked over it, but it is going to make it difficult to potentially offer players new contracts. Not a major concern, just something to have on your radar, maybe. Anyway, looking at the Premier League table, as I've already mentioned, we are currently top six wins in six. Man City and Arsenal, the two teams chasing us, two of the top four teams, of course, last year alongside ourselves. Liverpool have had a slow start to the year. They're only on 10 points right now. A win here could be great, but based on Man City's goal difference, which is actually a plus 17, despite the fact they've only won four games, I feel like to get a result here is going to be tricky, but given the fact we're at home, given the fact we beat them last episode, it should be possible with a, well, full strength team. Now, speaking of that team, how full strength is it? I hear you ask. The answer to that is yes, it is really full strength. Mosquero is currently coming back from injury. Is he fit enough? 
to be on the bench. I could potentially risk him, but you know what? We'll just keep Alex on the bench. I'm really trying to keep Alex happy after we made him a star player, and right now he's not crying, so that's good. Uh, elsewhere, Rodriguez still recovering from his broken ankle, uh, not ready for a fitness test. He is still going to be out for a little while yet, up to three weeks. There isn't really a need to rush him back at this point, of course, with the new addition at the back in Huari coming into the team. Yeah, I mean, he's not a starter anymore, Rodriguez. And Huari, I want to say he's taken to the Premier League like a duck to water, but it might even be better than that. One goal, one assist, 7.27 rating. What, what takes to something else better than a duck takes to water? Because whatever it is, he's better than that. It's like a, a fish to water. Yeah, okay, let's move on. So in terms of the starting 11, like I said, there's no injuries to speak of. We're in a really good spot. We can just go with the team that we have been playing on the regular. I'm trying to look like a professional. If I sip my mug of Lemsic and look through analytics, is this how real managers do it? I'm just having a little look at what they've done in previous games. How can we exploit Man City? It does suggest here they are most vulnerable against a 4-2-2 narrow, which is what we play. So that's good. And apparently we need to be scared of Widreago. This guy loves to have long shots. I mean, he, he, he does. He's had a lot of long shots and they've been clinical, apparently. Now, it's worth noting, Widrego is likely to play at right centre mid, so my left centre mid needs to be the more defensive player. That is going to be Ichikawa, so maybe that works out well. Maybe I'm maybe I'm concentrating too hard here. I feel like I need to put clothes down more on Widrego in this game. And Ken, Ken is definitely up to the task. Look at me, looking for analytics, sipping the mug. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I probably look like a mug. To be fair, doing it, I feel very professional. I'm taking my job too seriously. I have never taken a game of football manager so seriously. We are always going to press we Drago and always try and show him onto his weaker foot. That's the plan. And if you're wondering, Jack, why were you doing those instructions six minutes into the game? I forgot to do them before. I was just mashing continue. I was just excited to get into the match, really. Anyway, we're playing at home. I still hate the empty ground. I'm still not used to it. Ken, what can you do? Wari. I'm saying this like there's an immediate opportunity. We're just doddling around with it at the Back. But if we doddle, maybe we can find a way through. That's what that's what I'm hoping. Snedden's just chilling, isn't he? Number four, back to Huari. He could go left. He does go left. Lee in options down the line. Chelik is one of them. He's been a great goal scorer. He's been a great provider as well. Pulls it back to Misiak. Of course, Misiak got man of the match against Man City. On that occasion there, though, shot off target. Immediately, though, another set piece. Huari. Chelik under it, cannot get there. Jorgensen's going to hold on to it. Man City potentially going to look to build something from the back. Just a little reminder, when we took them on last episode in that uh, UEFA Super Cup, they gave away the ball playing out from the back. I wonder if they'll change their plan for this game as Darge gets it forward. We Dre a go. If he shoots and scores from range, I'm going to be fuming. Pellegrino, the left back, to Darge. What a tackle, Michael Bolton. We really need you to hurry up and put in another because Erlin Haaland's there. It's 1-0 what Man City. It's not going to plan. I feel like I should also point out I'm not just drinking them from the mug for dramatic effect. My voice is still very, very sore. So, yeah, it's magic. Magic. Man magic mug. Forgive me for the fact I'm a child here. Have you guys noticed this? When I lift up my mug to the camera, because it's so white, it darkens the room around me. It's Can you see that? It's quite subtle. It is actually a magic mug. Incredible. I'll tell you what. We know how to have fun around here at Work the Space HQ. At least this is my definition of fun. Not losing to Man City, M messing around with a mug. Tell you what, that really is going to make me reflect on my life decisions over the weekend. Anyway, Jeremy Pino's through on the right-hand side. Don't let him put in a cross, please. Lee Min pulls it back to Lewis. Weidrea goes there, close him down, show him on his weaker foot. It, it's two. It's two. The, the lines hasn't flagged. VAR is going to check this. I'm not very hopeful. Half the players appear to be on their way back to the halfway line. It's 2 0. It's 2 0. I don't know why I thought Man City was a good game to come back for. I think the result last episode, you know, 4 2 in the Super Cup after extra time, it gave me confidence. It gave me hope. And in spite of the fact we are top of the league, Man City are still bloody good. You know what? Maybe I just need to shout some encouragement. Let's try and cheer up the players. Come on, lads. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. We're not creating anything. It's not worked. Okay, it's half time. That was rather quick. It's 2 0. 2-0. Uh, they've not done a lot, but when they've done stuff, it's gone in. Uh, the temptation to throw a water bottle is very real, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to get shouty shouty. What was that? Lads, I've got a sore throat. Don't make me shout. I have just noticed Ichikawa is on a yellow card. He really needs to try and contain with Drago. The fact he's on a yellow scares me. Misiak, Chelik, Penref? Pen? Do I have a pen on my desk to hold up? 
I don't. It's a disaster. VAR is going to check the penalty. Is it going to be given? It is. That has come from absolutely nowhere. A chance to shift the momentum here. Sam Fay this year is on penalties. For everyone who hated Rojas on penalties last year, I've heard you. Sam Fay's missed it. I wasn't even watching and he's just missed it. I mean, to be fair, the keeper did save it. So at least he hit the target, I think. I wasn't actually watching. I was too busy telling you, don't worry, I've, I've dropped the person who misses all the time. Now the new blokes come in and missed. Okay, I'm going to make some changes after whatever happens here. Haddad launches it. Celik does not win it in the air. Erling Haaland to Pino. It doesn't feel fair when I look at the players they've got in their team. Rico Lewis on the overlap. The number 82 to the byline puts it in. It's not the best of defensive headers, but... Ken's going to get it away eventually. Celik, win that. What a touch that is. Dances around one man. Tries to dance around another. Pulls it to Rojas, who hits the woodwork. Son, you've got a score there. It's gone in anyway. It's an own goal from Guardiola. Uh, Celik should get the goal there. He's made everything happen in that highlight. This was honestly a very weird one. I thought when we saw Rojas hit the post, that was that. And yet, it falls back to Celik. He doesn't give up. He doesn't let his head drop. And Guardiola... Well, he's let us score. That was very kind of him. I feel like there's energy and momentum in the second half, and I need to lean into that a little bit. Rojas off Yukum. I'm bringing in Karim Kanate. Elsewhere, it's going to be... I don't know if this is a live commentary debut. It might be in the Premier League for Gilliland. I can't really remember. Either way, he's coming on in the Premier League here. I love Ichikawa. Don't love the fact he's on a booking. Zhao Victor on Yukum. And Lee Min's been poor today. You know what? NDIA. Let's go for the quad sub after 55 minutes. You know, I could be a bit reactive to what they do and try and anticipate what Man City do tactic-wise. Now, we're going to play our own game. We're going to get some fresh legs onto the pitch now and try and make some magic happen. More encouragement needed, I think, here. 23 minutes left and a highlight begins. Man City knocking the ball out from the back. Pellegrino to Kovalic, just as a reminder, wanted to sign him. Every time I see Kovalic pop up, I'm going to remind you that I wanted to sign him in the championship. And he said no to me. I feel like that's the best course of action to make myself feel better. Bolton to the byline, by the way. There's four players in the middle to aim for. Celik is one of them. He scores the header. The VAR officials are going to check this. Don't hurt me. Make it 2-2, two, two, please. If it counts, it's going to be massive. Um, is it, is it going to count? Is it going to count? It is going to count. For some reason, I, it, the way the players were reacting there, I thought it wasn't going to happen. It's two Englishmen linking up. Bolton... Back post, Celic. I mean, he looked miles offside there, but I'll, you know, I'll believe the official. I assume the left back was playing him on. Either way, it's 2-2. Two -two. I, I actually want to see the lines here for once. From that angle there, he looks offside. We won't question it. I'm just going to point at the match momentum graph. Look at that. Look at that suggests we're bloody massive. There's eight minutes left here. Oh, I feel, I, I kind of want to go more attacking and get greedy, and I feel like I shouldn't do that. In this second half, Man City have done diddly squat. A draw is far from disastrous for us. The six minutes left. Is there to be any late drama? Oh, the, I'm, it might actually have late drama. It could be Man City on the attack, though. Erling Haaland to Prestiani. There is some tired legs out there. We are not getting back very quickly here. Jeremy Pino against NDIA. Lays it back to Lewis. Can we get into him? Can we show some pressure? Can we, can we make something happen here? Man City knocking the ball around the back. There's 45 seconds left now. Any goal you imagine at this point would be decisive. Is Zidane about to get something out of his players? Prestiani, Batera to Haaland. We Drea go if he shoots from range. I'm fuming. Pino on the near side. Skips inside. Could shoot. Does shoot. I feel like football managers just show me that to mess with me. It's gone wide. It was never nearly, uh, well, a goal. It went way off target. It's not ideal, this game. We've got a point, which, based on the fact we were 2-0 at halftime, it's points rescued. I have to be honest, we were way better in the second half than they were in the first half, I feel like. We, overall, I think we deserve that game on the balance of play. Statistically, we were the better team. We retain our spot at the top of the league. Probably worth noting, no one behind us has played. We're the first two teams to play seven games, but we're in a pretty good spot still. If there is a cause for concern, it's the fact that we were 2-0 down against Liverpool in the first game of the year, and we've gone 2-0 down against Man City. And as good as it is to come back and fight back for results, 
You don't really want to make it something you have to do on the regular. Shellick, by the way, man of the match. He is continuing to do the job we've brought him in to do, isn't he? That result there also makes it 10 games unbeaten. Um, I feel like that's quite good. Then you look at it. There's a few too many draws in here. Now, annoyingly, I'll be honest, I didn't realise this until I hit start record. Uh, the game against Fulham is like 28 days away. It's four weeks away. So I'm going to go mash continue a lot. I think this happened last year, didn't it? I want revenge against Fulham. They're currently in 12th. Last year, we dropped points against them that cost us the title. I promise you, that's not happening in this next game. I hope, obviously. I can't actually promise it. I don't know if it's particularly petty of me, the fact that I just hate David Washington after what he did to us last year. You know, when he scored that equaliser in the first game of the season, or the first, it was the second game, wasn't it? it was second game of the season, first episode of last year. I had no idea that equaliser was going to cost me the title. I feel like I might be trying to manufacture a rivalry here. I just bloody hate Fulham. I've, ju I've just decided Rugby Town Fulham can't stand them. Before we get into that match, though, little bit of news on the coaching team front. I've signed Harry Kane. Uh, yeah, new attacking coach. He's very good. If you're sat wondering, Jack, wh why are you showing us Harry Kane? It's so I can put, I signed Harry Kane as the ep title of today's episode. You know, don't hate the me, don't hate the player, hate the game, it's YouTube. Yeah, I've signed Harry Kane. I can't wait to have me hugging him on the thumbnail. Now, now you know why he was here. I wasn't going to sign a 41-year-old as a player, was I? Anyway, in the early kickoff, Liverpool have just beaten Tottenham. Liverpool have had a rough start to the year, and yet they are only two points behind us. Uh, saying that, they have actually played two games more than us now. Chelsea have suddenly appeared alongside us, although they've also played a game more. So we're not going to read into that too much. Right now, in terms of teams unbeaten, only ourselves, Arsenal and Man City retain that. All with seven games played each. I'd really like to think today's not the day we're going to lose that. Now, in terms of team news, over the international break, Roger Rowe has picked up a little bit of an injury, but he is back and ready to play 75 minutes. Elsewhere, Misiak out with an injury. That one does suck a little bit. What it does mean is I can be biased and have some fun. David Gilliland is coming into the team. The Scottish international is going to play alongside his best mate in Sam Fay. Two players, rugby town born and bred, brothers from other mothers. Yeah, they're going to hopefully provide the creativity behind the strikers today. Okay, here we are at Craven Cottage, potentially seeking some revenge. I say potentially, I want revenge. It might have only been a draw last year. It felt like a defeat in the moment, didn't it, when they drawed level? I'd love to absolutely muller them. To be fair, they have actually got some good players. Patino's good. Melier's good in goal. He's not good enough to stop that. They have gifted us a goal there. That was very kind of them. I don't even feel like this was particularly good pressing by us, to be completely frank. It's just a god-awful pass, isn't it, by Belaba. I assume that was meant for Melier. Either way, Rojas perfectly weighted through ball to him. He was never going to miss that. Okay, one goal up in this game, but as we learned last year, 1-0, not a safe result. We need another. Gilliland, Celic. And that should have been a goal. I mentioned Melier being a good goalkeeper from football manager. He's shown it there. That was a tremendous save. We do still have a corner. Lee Min with his left foot, whipping it towards the back post. Bolton from one full back to another and over the crossbar. Really promising start to this game. Half an hour played. We are on top. It's another highlight starting with Fulham attempting to play the ball out from the back. Is anyone else? Maybe get a sense of deja vu. Maybe it's just a me thing. Patino, Belaba plays it forward towards Sal. Lee Min reads the play nicely, and now it's with Ichikawa, who's just done exactly what they did. Why did I so gleefully celebrate them bottling it? Ken. 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 What do you... It's just... It's a soft goal to concede is probably the best word. And the worst thing all, you've seen who scored it. David Pissing Washington. I hate him. Right, well, 1-1. One, one, that felt somewhat against a runner play, but the good news is there is another highlight. So maybe we're going to turn our frown upside down immediately. Sam Fay, Lee Min. Players queuing up in the middle if he can get the ball in there. He can. Celic shoots wide of the post. That was a really good chance. Four minutes of added time at the end of the half. I thought something might happen because it was a load of time. Uh, no, that's not what's happened. Instead, we go in all level. We drew against them 1-1 last year. We were on top in this game until we shot ourselves in the foot. We need to do better. I've got Shouty Shouty and David, the child, is looking disheartened. Let's give him some encouragement. Uh, keep going. You've got the ability. He's inspired. Bl bloody love David. You know, some players need bad cop. Some players need good cop. David Gilliland, he needs good cop. And I will give him good cop all he wants. Lean in. Corner. Make something magical happen. It's in. It's on the head of Huari. It's his second goal for the club. The Brazilian centre-back coming up clutch. 
You might remember last episode, I noticed Huari was taking corners. He is one of our better left-footed corner takers, but I feel like his presence in the box is needed. That is exactly why. We're coming up to an hour play here. I probably should be weighing up making some changes. It's not been an amazing display here, but we've got one corner goal. Could we get another? The answer is yes. Bolton scores it. Lehman in with the assist. In the first half, there was that highlight that was a corner. I almost feel like that was a warning to Fulham. They've not heeded that warning. We've now backed two in the second half. Mark Anderson on a booking. I do not like that. We are going to bring in uh, Riviera, I think, to play as the defensive uh, deep line playmaker for us. Elsewhere, Faye and Gilliland have been poor. I'm going to make a double change here. And Goma's going to come on. And Connor Gegen. Gegen signed last January. Thought he'd be a very, very fringe option. With Pietro leaving, he will find himself on occasion playing for us. He's got 42 caps for Scotland. He should be good. Yeah, live con debut for him, and in fact, it's his full debut. He's not played in any competitions. It's his time to shine. Okay, three fresh legs into the midfield. I'm going to hope that I can inject a little bit of energy in this one. Somehow, I realise I've kept Ken on the pitch, despite the fact he's the reason we conceded. Okay, uh, word of advice for whoever the Fulham manager is. Train your set-piece defending midweek before your next game. It's 4-1, it's Bolton again, and it's Ngoma, the number 10, the beautiful man... Whipping it to the near post on this occasion, and Bolton, he leaps highest. Ten minutes left here, I'll be honest, I feel dirty about the fact we've scored three corners. And yet, to be fair, like, it's not my fault Fulham are bad at defending them. Yeah, we've been really, really good in this game. We definitely deserve to win the game on the balance of play. The manner in which we've done it is a little unorthodox. Could Bolton get a hat-trick? with the last chance of the game. We're probably going to need a penalty to make it happen, although I give him permission, if he needs to, to stay in the box. I don't know what's just happened there. Celik has scored. I think ngoma has been involved somehow. I think the ball's been kicked into his chest. It's 5-1. It's one of the more scrappy goals I've seen. But at least now you can't say we only won because of the corners. Look, we've scored two open play goals now. What happened here with Ngoma? I don't know. I think Washington's kicked Ngoma's head thinking it was the football. But the ball's in the back of the net, and Chalik scored to keep his really good goal-scoring run going. It finishes here 5-1, and when you look at the match momentum, when you look at the stats, yeah, we, we were the better team. We've not had that many super high goal-scoring wins, I feel like, this year. A 5-1, you know, that's nice. We could do with a few more of those, especially when I look at Man City's goal difference. Theirs is plus 20. Now, as I mentioned at the top of today's episode, there will be no episode on Monday. And when I look ahead to the upcoming games, there's actually not that many games that stand out as super obvious ones. One thing I am really dreading is this run of games around Christmas. Man United, Chelsea, Tottenham, Liverpool, Leicester, Newcastle... PSG, who organised that? We have got Arsenal and Atleti coming up, but those games are rather soon. I don't know if I want to do them next episode, if, although if I do do them, uh, do do, um, we then could maybe jump forward and do something special with all those games on Wednesday. Maybe that's a plan. Anyway, folks, we are going to wrap things up there for today. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Have a nice time. I'll be back on Tuesday. Take it easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll talk to you in a bit. I'm out.